In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, in today's Gospel, the when they came uh, to the site of Caper Capernaum, the tax collectors uh, uh, approached Peter, which um, like uh, and asked them, "Does your teacher not pay the taxes to the temple?" So, like every Jew uh, offered out of reverence for the temple, uh, like a tax of two denarii or something like that. So they ask, "Does your teacher not pay?" The two drachma, the two drachmas taxes. Um, Peter replied, "Yes." So in a way, yes, doesn't your teacher uh, obey to the law? Does but here we see clearly that uh, he does not belong to <clears throat> to their group. He is rejected from them because he was not part of them he had a different different theology a different approach and that's uh, that's why they asked peter uh, this question so he said yes he will pay it and um, and when he entered the house before he s said anything jesus spoke to him first saying what do you think, Simon? From whom the kings of the earth uh, are taking the taxes and from their own children uh, or from uh, strangers whom are not members of their royal household? And Peter said to him, uh, from strangers, of course. Then Jesus said to him, Therefore, the children of the king are ex exempt, uh, exempt from uh, all taxation. So, in this case, if we uh, look at the picture closely, then we see that um, <clears throat> Jesus is the Son of God. So, the temple is the house of God, which means that he is tax exempted, right? So, and he is saying, so, like, as an explanation, then neither I, who am the true son of God, nor you who serve me, are obliged to pay taxes for the house of our father God. However, so as not to offend them and cause them to misunderstand our example and be led to this respect to the temple and the people, Go to the sea and cast a hook. Take the first fish to come up, open its mouth, and you will find a silver coin. Take that and give it to them for me and for you. So, as we heard in another gospel, give to the Caesar what belongs to the Caesar and to God what belongs to God. So, as uh, not... To, to scandalize odd others, because as the Son of God, he, of course, he was tax exempt. He should not pay the tax. But <clears throat> to give the right example to everybody, he humbled himself so much. But he also makes Peter to obey. So, you see, like, he is sending him, saying, go to the sea, take a hook. Right, make a rod, pretty much, and um, throw it. And the first fish that to come up, open its mouth, and you'll find the coin. So, he, what is, what is, what does this mean? He's sending him where? To the church. What is the? The truth. He, him. As the Son of God being the truth, right? He is making him to obey to his word. So the gospel, the holy gospel, is the word of God. And this is where we are seeking 
the answers right and the first that comes up when we are in trouble we don't know what what to do we pray we go to church pray uh, either ask the priest or ask a, a child and god will speak you through the child ask the gospel and the page you'll ask will give you the, will open will give you the answer you're seeking so you see like the first fish not the rest but the first that comes see the f the first thing that we 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 receive through the gospel does the right answer <clears throat> for us so he made him obey and for this we have to be prepared his him as a fisherman he was uh, very well prepared he knew how to do that right so which means as orthodox christians we have to be prepared with fasting, with, pray, with prayer, uh, having knowledge of the Holy Gospel, of the Holy Tradition, being connected to the Church and its mysteries, and then we will receive the answer to our questions, to our concerns. So, and then when Jesus showed this... Uh, Preference for Peter, the disciples came to him and, uh, and said, "Who is the, going to be the great, the greatest, and and more, most distinguished among us in the kingdom of heaven? Who is going to be the first or, or greater in the kingdom of heaven?" Then Jesus called the child, placed him in their midst, and said, "Truly, I tell you." Unless you change your attitude and become humble, innocent, and pure like, like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. My dear ones, in the New Testament, the, the theme of... Uh, Childlikeness uh, holds a special place. We can accurately speak of a new of the New Testament theology of childlikeness, uh, as this concept has uh, a quite specific theological content. Let the little children come to me, and uh, do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a, a little child will never enter it. Truly, I tell you, I, I'll tell you, unless you change and become like li little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever takes the low, lowly position of this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So you see, in uh, many um, parcels in many places of the Holy Gospel, we hear this assimilation of the little children, and he is given to exam uh, bringing this example of the purity of heart. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learn and reveal them to the little children. Matthew um, chapter 11 verses 25-26 And whoever becomes one such child in my name welcomes me. But if you, anyone, if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me, to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hang around their neck and be thrown in the depths of the sea. With these words, Christ first rejects, rejects the dismissive approach to children and childlikeness as uh, something insignificant and trivial. Second, he presents children as examples to be emulated and calls us to learn from them how to humbly accept the kingdom of God. Third, 
he elevates children above the wise of this world as initiates of a divine relationship. Fourth, he proclaims the loving attitude toward children to welcome them as a condition for salvation. <clears throat> so, uh, for us, the mature ones, uh, the it's most difficult because uh, we put our logic first, right? Uh, we like um, to analyze things. The little ones, you just told them, they do whatever they are, to, they are told. And even uh, if um, you scream at them, they will forget in five minutes, whatever. Uh, and this, this shows their ability <clears throat> of love, of forgiveness, their purity of heart, which uh, is missing from us, the grown-ups. We must approach uh, children with great care as examples of moral perfection, absolute faith, sincere, truth, uh, humility, innocence, unconditional love, complete gratitude, uh, reverent fear, uh, open, uh, openness to knowledge and creativity, uh, hope for the best, readiness uh, the change and improve through love for children the belief expresses their love for christ whoever does not love children does not love christ our lord and savior the complete uh, openness to god is a capacity of the child's heart their most important talent, according to the Holy Fathers, the heart is not merely a physical organ that ensures blood circulation in the body, but is the center of the entire uh, psychosomatic life of a person. It's where Christ should dwell. What happens in the heart, what is within it, and what it leans directly influence what a person lives and breathes what they truly are since where uh, jesus said where your treasure treasure is there uh, your heart is also it is uh, precisely in the heart that the decisive choice is made between god's will and the temptation of the evil one here lies the battlefront between God and the evil. Here the, 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 the devil fights against God and the battlefield is the heart of, the heart of man. When uh, childlikeness is understood as complete trust in God, adulthood, which is opposed to this, is understood as cunning, uh, insincerity, filled, self conceit concept pride, uh, the closing of uh, a man from God, and the lack of trust in God. Children, especially infants and toddlers, uh, toddlers with their pure hearts and souls, are capable of uh, hearing God's call and responding to it immediately. Therefore, they are capable of seeing and feeling God's presence in their hearts and lives. The commandment, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, Matthew 5, 8, <clears throat> speaks precisely of this. With adults, everything is completely different. Many already tainted to, by their sinful passion with dark, dirty hearts, are often unable to hear God's voice. If this voice does reach their conscience, they often lack the strength to respond to it. For an adult burdened with uh, their sins, it is very difficult to renounce their arrogant will 
to escape from the power of sinful passions and to follow God's will. It is much easier for them to sin by scumbing to the temptation of the evil one than to avoid sin. Let alone uh, live a virtuous life. In, uh, in summary, we must say that in the New Testament calls us to be both children and adults simultaneously, children in heart who unconditionally believe in God, trust Him, and adults in mind who um, responsibly knows God and His teaching and accept Him and becoming followers of Him. Childlikeness, it is the root and starting point of adulthood. Sincere childlike faith is the root and beginning of mature knowledge of God. With the words of the Lord and His Apostles, our Church calls us, on the one hand, to always remain children, remain children in heart, to guard and not lose this childlike purity of heart, on the other hand, to realize that we are still children immature in mind, and that we must strive in every way to become mature adults in the work of knowing God. In that way, we all are called to come to mind, to repent, to accept God, and to follow Him, and to pray Him, to pray to Him, to always uh, strengthen up His hand and lift us up uh, to life eternal. Amen.